What's going on YouTube? CyberOptic here with a brand new video for you today. And this video is going to be a continuation from the last discussion that we were having about hand painting bump maps and textures inside of Blender. Now I try to keep these videos as short as possible and because of this, there's sometimes information that just gets left out. So in this video, I just want to fill in some of those gaps. I want to give you guys a little bit of extra information about hand painting bump maps that I felt like should have been in the last video so that's what this video is going to be about so anyways let's go So the first thing we're going to talk about in this video is mixing bump maps together with normal maps. Now there may be times in your project where you want to use a combination of both bump maps and normal maps uh, and there's a very simple way of doing so. Now in an earlier video we talked about mixing two normal maps together. We went in here and we duplicated this principle BSDF. Then we used a mix shader in order to mix them together. Uh, however, when you are mixing bump maps and normal maps, there is no need for creating a second principle BSDF. So real quickly, I want to show you guys that process. Now that we are back over into texture paint, the first thing I want to do is I just want to come in here and paint a couple of bump maps on top of this object. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to go to my black brush and I'm just going to draw a very simple line to create this inset design right here. Uh, next, I also want to include one that protrudes outward from the body. So let's go over to our white paint brush and let's draw a second line right here below it. Now, let's say at this point in my project, I am done drawing all of my bump maps. The next thing I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to add my normal map to this part of the weapon. Uh, so we're going to go right up here to our texture slots. We're going to click on this plus sign and go to normal. We're going to set our width and our height to be 2048. And then, of course, we want to leave this color as is and then click OK. Now you will notice that the color of this weapon did not change. That is because of the viewport that we're in. If we change over to solid, you will see the blue color has been added to the weapon. However, when you are working with bump maps and normal maps, it's often a better idea to stay in the second mode right here, this materials preview, so that you can see the exact placement of these objects. As long as this texture right here is selected whenever you import your normal map, you will be adding it to the proper nodes inside of your shading tree. Uh, so real quickly, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to hit quick edit. I'm going to grab my normal map. I'm going to bring it in on top of my project. As you can see, because I am using this view right here, I can make sure that my normal map does not overlap with my bump maps. We can then delete layer one. Hit file, save, and then of course go back over here and click apply. Now you will not see it at first. That is because currently our bump map is the thing that is plugged into the normal input on our principal BSDF. If we go back over here to shading, you will see that we now have these two new nodes for our normal map. Uh, so when we were creating our bump map, we actually used this color output and connected it to the height input on our bump. Uh, but one thing you'll notice is that we have this open normal input right here. All we simply have to do is take these nodes and just plug it in. And as you can see, we have now been able to combine both our normal map and our bump map together. Uh, so this process is definitely very easy. There is no need in creating a second principle BSDF whenever you are combining together bump maps and normal maps inside of Blender. The next thing I want to talk about inside of this video is a problem that you are going to run into whenever you are hand painting bump maps. Now notice the size of the circle around my cursor right now. I currently have this set to 9 pixels. However, if I scroll out, notice that the size of that circle does not change. So for example, if I go in here and I draw a line at this zoomed in level, and then I zoom out and I try to draw that exact same line, uh, notice how the bottom one is a lot bigger than the top one. 
Uh, so this is going to be a problem. If you are constantly zooming in and zooming out to look at your work, you are going to have a lot of uneven lines where some of them are bigger than the other one. Uh, there is no way to lock this to your zoom view. Uh, so just pay attention to this as you are creating your bump maps. One thing that I like to do is go in with a paintbrush and draw up my design and then I'll kind of zoom out and look and see if I like it or not. Then once I have my design the way that I want to, I will zoom in real closely and then I'll just use this hand to move it back and forth until I'm done drawing out my bump maps. Uh, so this is just something I wanted to make you guys aware of. So the next thing I want to talk about in this video is erasing bump maps. So let's say you've worked pretty far through your project. You come back and you take a look at it and you decide, I really don't want these bumps here. I want to just completely take these out of my project. Uh, there is a very simple way of doing this. Now, if we go up here to my brushes, you'll notice that I have one called eraser here. If you are working with bump maps, you are more than likely going to want to set this brush up. Uh, the only thing that you really need to know here is that this base color needs to be 0.5 all the way down. Uh, the rest of the settings are really up to you, you know, how you set your fall off and everything. Uh, you just need to make sure and have this set to your mid gray color. Then once you have this brush set up, we can simply go over here into our UV and we can start painting over these objects like so. And as you can see, they are now erased out of our project. Uh, so this is something that a lot of you guys probably already knew. However, I did want to include it inside of this video for anyone who is new to the channel or new to Blender who is looking for a way to take their bump maps out of their design. So the next thing we're going to talk about in this video is using stencils in order to create bump maps inside a blender. Now in videos number 10, I showed you guys how to create a 2048 by 2048 transparent background and then add graphics to it so that you could then bring them over into blender and paint your graphics onto your weapon. Uh, when it comes to making stencils for bump maps, a lot of that information is still the same with just a couple of different exceptions. Now there may be some of you who just feel more comfortable drawing designs out in a program like Photoshop or Inkscape uh, and you also may have trouble with the round brush obviously there aren't different brush shapes that you can use inside a blender so in a lot of these cases it's just easier for people to draw them out inside of their uh, favorite program and then bring them over as a stencil inside a blender as you guys can see here, I have created a new template and this is on a 2048 by 2048 transparent background. You'll notice that I have two different hexagons right here at the top, both black and white. I also have these two boxes right here that have a gradient on the outside of them. This one was created by using opacity and then of course this one was used by simply fading a black color into our mid gray color right here on the edge. Now that I'm back into Blender, the first thing we're going to want to do is create a new brush for our template. I'm going to go right here and click on this X and then of course I'm going to click new. Then we're just going to give this brush a name. Let's call this template. I'm going to leave my color at white and then right here under texture we're going to click on new and then under mapping we're going to change this to stencil. Then once we've changed all this, we're going to go to our texture properties tab. We're going to click on open and then we're going to import our template. Now, if you haven't seen this in some of the earlier videos, if you need to move this around, you can do so by clicking in your right trigger button. Uh, if you need to resize it, you can hold down shift and click in your right trigger and then scroll your mouse up or down. Then if you want to rotate it, you can do so by holding down the control button and using your right trigger button and then you can rotate this. So now that I have this in my project, I want to go ahead and start painting these objects. So first I'm going to paint the black one. Uh, as you can see, this looks exactly how we would expect it to. It is actually going inward into the body. Uh, and then I'm going to paint over the top of this white one and notice that it also looks the way it's supposed to. It's actually sticking outward and I never actually change the color of my brush. 
if we bring this back over the top of our project here, let's change this brush to black this time. Uh, you'll see that the black one comes out the way it's supposed to, it goes inward. But now if I paint over the white one, notice it also goes inward as well. If we look at our UV over here, you'll notice that this time this out one is black instead of white. Uh, so that's the first thing I wanted to point out. You know, whenever you are creating these stencils in another program, you want to create these colors based on whether or not you want them to go inward or outward. And then once you get over into Blender, you just want to use a white brush in order to paint these into your design. The next thing I want to do is I want to brush these two designs into my weapon right here. Uh, now, if you remember from earlier, I talked about how this one used opacity to create the gradients on the outside, and this one was actually just a fade between two colors. Uh, and the reason I did this is I wanted to show you guys the difference. So if I paint this first one into my design, uh, you can kind of see what it does. It's got very sharp edges right here on both of these bevels. Uh, however, if I bring the second one into my design and I paint it in, you'll notice that it is a little bit different. Uh, this time it looks a little bit more rounded. It sort of rounds out into the middle. Uh, so that's just something I wanted to point out, you know, based on how you do your fall off on these objects, it can change the way that it looks inside of your design. This is just something that you have to play around with a little bit, but eventually you'll figure out exactly how you want to set these up to make it look the way that you want inside of your project. As well as using stencils in order to add bump maps, you can also simply use the quick edit mode in order to add them as well. Uh, for those of you who are just more comfortable drawing things out inside of other programs, you can just draw a very simple white and black design and then use the quick edit mode in order to bring it in and add it to your project. So real quickly, I'm going to hit quick edit. I'm going to bring in this very simple white and black hexagon design that I created uh, and then I'm going to flip this 90 degrees so that it fits on the inside of this object. Then once I have this placed, I'm just going to delete layer one. I'm going to hit file save and then I'm going to click apply. And as you can see, I was very easily able to add this hexagon shape to my design. Uh, so there may be times in your project where you find that stencils are extremely useful in doing certain things. Other things, it may just be easier to draw them out and add them like this. I will leave that completely up to you. However, I did want to show you guys both of these methods inside of this video. So this concludes our discussion on hand-drawn bump maps, and hopefully you guys got a lot of useful information out of the last two videos. Now, when I'm working on a project, I find that there's never one specific process that I will use for everything. There are times when I use hand-drawn normal maps for certain things, and then other times where I use bump maps. I may use a stencil in one part of my design and then draw out my bump maps in another. You know, it really just comes down to playing around with a lot of these different processes and figuring out which ones look best inside of your design. So I leave that up to you guys to kind of figure that out. Uh, but definitely, you know, try all these different processes out and see which ones look best to you. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you would, please leave likes or comments down below and make sure and hit that subscribe button because it really helps this channel out a lot. Anyways, thank you guys so much and we will see you in the next video.